Hey, kiddo, go ahead and jump in the back. Your boots aren't too muddy now, are they? No, they're not dirty. They're fine. The pitch was completely dry, so none of the dirt stuck to my cleats. It hasn't rained for a while. Then we're all good to go. Hop in and we can get moving on our way. How was practice then? Are you guys all ready for the start of season? All ready to win the championship? It was great. I think we're finally going to do really well this time. We came in almost dead last in last year's season, so we can't do much worse. Oh well, there's more to the game than just winning. As long as you're having a good time with your friends, then nothing else matters. Yeah, Dad, I know that. It is fun to just get out there and play, but winning is fun too. I don't care about us getting first place or anything, but it would be cool if we at least did a little better. At least better than second last. It was embarrassing to be so close to the bottom. I understand. Don't sweat it too much, though. I'm sure you will do much better. I mean, you've been practicing so much these past few months, and you're getting bigger and stronger every day. Soon you'll be even taller than me. Does that mean I will get to drive the car when that happens? Does it? <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. That's not how things work. Driving isn't something that is based on height, but you will be able to drive when you're older. That's a little way off for you just now, though. Damn, it looks like so much fun driving. I can't wait to learn to do it. It is fun, but it can be dangerous as well, you know? These things are made of tons of heavy metal. You need to be careful so that you don't hurt anyone. Oh, speaking of which, how is your leg doing? Is it all better now? Has it fully healed? Oh, you mean that scratch that I got from practice last week? Yeah, it's all fine. The scratch has healed up, and when I cover it with my socks, it doesn't even hurt to slide on the pitch. Well, maybe it does hurt, but just a little anyway. That's the way. It's not something that will stop you from playing in the first game, right? No way. I would never miss that. Not for some tiny scratch like this, anyway. And what would the team do without their star player, anyway? That's exactly what I was thinking. You know, this kind of thing reminds me of when I was your age. Does that mean that you are the star player of your soccer team, too? Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> not even close. Uh, first of all, I played basketball, not soccer. But I do have a little story for you. Uh, so one time I must have been maybe a little older than you are now, so maybe 12? We had trained so much for the upcoming season. We all felt so ready for it. And then the day before the first game, our star player told us that he was moving away from the district and wasn't going to be on our team anymore. That first game, we got absolutely demolished. The score was something like 1282, if I remember correctly. We never came back from that defeat. I think we only won a single game that season, and then I quit basketball. Dad, that's so lame. How could you lose that badly? Don't tell me that I'm going to turn out to be as bad at sports as you are. I don't think that you need to worry about that. You're already much better at sports than your old man ever was. Thank God for that. I don't want to have to quit soccer. I love playing it. You won't have to quit anything. Don't you worry about that. Uh, by the way, are you hungry already? You bet. I'm starving. Did Mom cook dinner? What's for dinner? I'm not exactly sure, but your grandparents are over, and I think Grandma was helping your mom cook something up for dinner tonight. It should be great. Wait, do you mean that Grandpa Bill and Grandma Irene are at home right now? Yay! No, oh, uh, sorry, that's not quite what I meant. I was talking about your mother's parents. Grandpa Mike and Grandma Clara are over. Oh, okay, I see. Is everything okay? Uh, you don't sound too happy about that. Oh, it's nothing really. But you know that Grandpa Mike always makes fun of me for playing soccer. I don't like it when he does that. He keeps trying to get me to quit and play something else instead. Yeah, I know what he can be like. He's a football guy, so he has it in his head that football is the better sport. Don't let it get to you, though. He means well, even if he is a bit grumpy about it sometimes. He loves you, you know? 
He just wants you to grow up to be a big strong man in the future. That's all. Sometimes he just has a funny way of showing how much he loves you. Just don't dwell on what he says for too long. Give him a quick laugh and he will move on to something else. Sure, I got it. I'll try to do that. Honey, we're home. Tom is starving and wants to eat everything you cooked, he said. What did you and Clara cook? Is dinner ready yet? Hi, boys. Hi, sweetie. How was practice? Did you do well? It was good, Mom. And I told you not to call me sweetie anymore. I'm not a baby anymore. I'm already 10 years old. I'm your mother and I will call you whatever I like. And you will have to deal with it. Now go have a shower and get changed. I won't let you eat a single thing until those hands are clean and you're out of that filthy jersey. Okay, Mom. I'll be quick, though. Don't start without me. I'll go wash up a little bit as well before we sit down at the table. Did you need help with anything? No, that's okay. My parents can lend me a hand with anything I need. But we're really just about ready to set the table. We made mashed potatoes and roast chicken, by the way. Great, that sounds like exactly what I need right now. I'll see you in the dining room in a bit then. So, Tom, your mom was telling me that you were just coming home from soccer practice. Are you really still playing that wimp's game of soccer? Well, are you? Answer me when I ask you something. Yes, Grandpa. I'm still playing soccer. I don't want to quit it either. I love playing soccer. You need to play a real man's sport, like football. Even baseball would be better than what you're doing right now. It should be a real American game, not some crap that came over here from Europe. They don't know anything about sports over there. How are you gonna get to grow into a real man when you're just running around the field too scared to even get down and dirty by hitting into another player? Look how scrawny you look. You're what? 10 now? There were six-year-olds bigger than you back in my day. They could probably have beaten you down and taken the ball from you before you even knew what hit you. Is that what you want? To be beaten by some six-year-olds? That's enough, Mike. Tom can do what he likes, and he chose soccer as his sport of choice. There is nothing wrong with that either. And I would bet my life that you're the one who put him onto it. You never played football when you were younger, did you, Harry? No, I didn't play football. I played basketball at school when I was younger. I thought so. You don't seem the type to have ever played football before. And look at you now. Do you really want Tom to grow up to be like you? Dad, that's enough. We're eating here, you know. There's no need to say anything like that. Yes, honey. Let the boy play what he likes. Not everyone wants to be smacked around like in football. As long as he is having fun, that's the important thing. And they're the worse for it. You can find out more about yourself getting knocked around a bit on the field than anything that they will teach you at that damn school these days. It's not just about having fun, it's about winning. It's about competition. It's about finding that warrior spirit and going on the attack until you get a touchdown. All these young boys are turning into wusses and picking lame jobs doing art and photography. This younger generation is going soft, but I don't want my grandson to go the same way as them. Dad, you know that Harry is a professional photographer. You don't need to say those things about people's jobs. I know damn well what he does for a living, and I said what I said, and I meant it too. Mike, I know how you feel about my job, but we've been over this hundreds of times already. I do what I do because I love it. It's a good job and I'm not going to be changing it for anything. Now, let's just put this conversation to rest and enjoy the dinner. There is no need to turn this into an argument when we have such great food here in front of us. Clara, thanks so much for coming to help June cook today. It's always a pleasure when you're here. Thank you so much, dear. What do you think of the mashed potatoes? Do you like them? I tried to make them a little different today than how I usually make them. I was a little worried they might not be as good as usual. Did they turn out all right? They're absolutely divine, Clara. I love them. 
Actually, could I have some more? Listen, Mike, uh, do you mind stepping out with me into the yard for a quick second while everyone else is in the living room watching TV? Why is that? What do you need to show me out there? Did you mess up cutting the lawn again and need some advice? I told you that if a man can't cut his own lawn, there's not a damn thing that I can do to help him. Showing me your mess-ups isn't going to change anything. It's got nothing to do with the lawn. There's nothing for me to show you out there. It's just that I wanted to talk to you for a bit in private. Away from Tom and June and Clara. Oh, fine, all right then. Well, what did you need to tell me that we had to come out here for? You better not be wasting my time. There's something that I have wanted to bring up for quite some time now. It's about the way that you talk to Tom and about him as well. Huh? What are you getting at? What's wrong with how I speak to him? Couldn't you be a little bit nicer to him? You're always putting him down for being small and calling him a wimp for playing soccer. That's because he is small and he is a wimp for playing soccer. If I don't tell him, then who the hell will? He doesn't need to be coddled like a baby. Nobody needs to tell him anything like that in the first place. That's not the sort of thing that kids need to be told all the time. I understand that you want him to be a man and grow up to be big and strong. I really do get it. This is your way of showing him you care and trying to get him to grow up as well. But that is not the way that you should be doing it. I don't think. He doesn't see it as tough love, he sees it as a lack of love. And that's exactly the problem with kids these days. If no one is patting them on the head and telling them that they did a good job, then they cry about it as though something bad has actually happened. In my day, it wasn't like that. No, even as kids we had to be tough and take the whole world by the horns to make sure it didn't gouge us when we weren't looking. Maybe that's what it was like back in your day, but it's not your day anymore. Times have changed and that's not how we treat kids anymore. That's not how I want my son to be treated, that's for sure. I know you have your own ways of doing things, but he is my son and I have my own way of raising him. So, what do you want me to do then, huh? Act as though he will break if I touch him? Should I pretend that he's a fragile little child that always needs a nice word? I can't do that, Harry. That's not the way that I was raised. And I don't think that's the way anyone should be raised. It's not in me to act like that when I don't think it's right. I'm not asking you to do that at all. I know kids need to be knocked down a little every now and then so that they can learn to pick themselves back up. That's a very valuable thing for kids to learn before they become adults. I agree with you on that part at least. But it shouldn't be their family members who are the ones knocking them down, Mike. It won't be good for him in the long run. Just hold off on the talk about him being a wimp and all the trash talk about soccer. You don't have to be all nice or anything. Just stop doing that for me, please. Maybe when he's older, you will get your wish and he will join the high school football team or something. You never know. Hobbies change over time. But if you keep it up like this, then he will start to hate football before he's ever tried it. He will associate it with bad memories from his childhood. I don't agree with you, Harry. But if what I say is really going to make him hate football, then I'll try to keep a clamp on it. I want the boy to know how good the game really is and stop playing that idiot sport that he does now. But I am only doing this so that he doesn't get turned away from the best damn game in the entire world. It's not because you think what I'm doing is wrong. I understand that, and I appreciate it, Mike, I really do. That's all that I wanted to mention to you today. Good, we're finally done then. Let's get back inside, this has taken too long. No, oh, and uh, by the way, uh, there is actually one more thing. What is it now? I thought you said we were done. Just one more thing. Tom has his first soccer game of the season this Saturday. I'm sure he would be happy to have you come and watch him play. Maybe you would like to join us if you're free. It might be a good chance for you and Tom to bond a little bit over sport. I hate that game, but maybe it would do the boy some good to have me on the sidelines. I might be able to teach him a little bit of sense. I'll try be there. What time is it? The game starts at 8.30 in the morning, this Saturday. I can send you the details by text later on. Fine. And by the way, the lawn looks like crap out here. You need to learn how to do it properly, but I am not going to be the one who shows you how. Hey, 
Hey, I just wanted to say that I am sorry about my dad and what he was saying to you at the dinner table today. You know how he can be. Don't take him too seriously, okay? He's always been like that. No, I don't take him too seriously. I know what he's like. He said that kind of thing to me hundreds of times before. It doesn't get to me at all. But I don't really like it when he talks to Tom like that. He's only 10. He shouldn't have to hear that sort of thing from his grandfather. Oh, come on. It's not really all that bad, is it? It's just a little bit of tough love. All kids need a little bit of that in their lives. He's just winding him up a bit. I know that's where it's coming from, but I don't think Tom does. It's not obvious to him why Mike speaks and acts like that towards him. It would be a different story if he was mainly nice and supportive, and only said those types of comments sometimes, but it's not like that. He's almost always negative when it comes to Tom's hobbies. When I told him that his grandparents were over for dinner, do you know what he did? No. What did he do? He cheered out loud. He was super happy that he would get to see them. See? So what's the problem? Why are you making it sound as though Tom doesn't like his grandfather? Tom obviously doesn't mind what Mike says to him then, does he? He wouldn't be happy to see him if he felt that dad was being mean to him. He cheered because he thought it was Grandpa Bill and Grandma Irene. Oh. That's exactly the same reaction he had when I told him that it wasn't. That it was Mike and Clara who were coming over. He told me that he doesn't like it when Mike makes fun of soccer. He loves that sport. He shouldn't have to listen to people bring him down about it all the time. And we should be happy that he does love sport, that he's not inside on the computer playing video games all day long. A lot of kids his age don't even play sports anymore. That's the kind of time that we live in. Okay, but that doesn't mean that my dad is wrong. Maybe it's exactly because it's that sort of time that we're living in that it's important for Tom to get a little bit of old school parenting. You're not going to be around to protect him forever. And you know that my dad was in the military. He wants things to be his way. And he is very used to getting things to be the way he wants them. That's what he has always been like. He was the same when I was growing up as well. I'm not so sure that he is wrong about it either. But this is not the military, June. This is a family. Tom doesn't need to be some barbarian that goes around hitting people or whatever it is that Mike wants him to be doing. He's only 10 and needs to spend his childhood being supported and trying out new things so that he could find out what he really likes to do. And he seems to have already found it. He loves soccer. I want to keep it that way. I don't want anything to tarnish the love for the game that he has found. But you know, some of my friends often complain about how their boys and even girls don't listen to what they say and act up and don't do the things that they're supposed to be doing. I don't think it's such a bad thing for kids to learn that not everything goes their way all of the time. Sometimes they need a bad guy in their life. At least a little bit. But Tom isn't like that. He doesn't act up and he does what he is told and what he's supposed to do. It's fine to be a little harsh if he does the wrong thing. That's not what I'm saying. I don't think that we should never tell him off or just let him do whatever he wants all the time. But any sort of negative comments, or whatever you want to call it, should be reserved when he actually does something wrong and needs to be reprimanded. I will be the first one to say that it is the right way to do things. I will be the first one to sit him down and tell him what he did was wrong. But it shouldn't be coming from his grandpa when we're trying to enjoy a nice dinner and he hasn't done anything to be told off for. It just doesn't come across as tough love. It just sounds mean. I think you just don't understand my dad. I grew up with him, okay? I know him really well, and I know what he is trying to do. He really does mean well. And I turned out okay, didn't I? So he must have done something right. There is some method to what he does. Well, you've got me there. You didn't just turn out all right. You turned out beautifully. Thank you. <laughs> I think so, too. Okay, listen, let's drop it for now. We won't sort anything out by arguing between the two of us. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention that I did speak to Mike in private today after dinner. Oh god, this doesn't sound good. When did that happen? I didn't even notice that you guys had gone off somewhere. It was when you were in the living room with Clara and Tom watching TV. Not long after dinner. We went out into the yard so that we could talk in private. This doesn't sound good. 
I can't imagine he took it well if you tried to confront him on something. What did you say to him? There is nothing to worry about. It all went fine. I just told him that I didn't want him to be talking to Tom the way that he had been. And he agreed to try and stop pressing the idea of football all the time. Wow. Really? Dad agreed to that. That's got to be a first. No offense, but I never thought that he would take any suggestions from you seriously. No offense taken. I never thought that he would either, but I still had to try, didn't I? To be honest, I was really shocked by how receptive he was. I expected him to just brush it off without agreeing to anything. But that's a good thing, isn't it? I mean, he explicitly told me that he didn't agree with me on this point, but that he would try to not bring up football all the time or make fun of soccer anymore. And you know what else? I invited him to Tom's first soccer game this Saturday. He said that he would come. I'm really surprised that things went so well. I don't think Dad has watched a single game of soccer in his entire life. I didn't think anything would be enough to get him to sit through a match. This is his grandson, after all. He's not just gonna watch some random people play soccer or anything like that. I think this will be a good time for him to show some support to Tom. And maybe he won't even hate it so much after he sees his grandson out there on the pitch. What the hell are these kids doing out there? Do something, you wimps! What, are you too scared to even get close to the others? Smack him! Bump into them, knock them into the dirt! Mike, stop that. They're not supposed to be hitting anyone. This isn't boxing, this isn't how the game is supposed to be played. What? What a joke. You call this a sport? I've seen babies be more aggressive and competitive than these kids are being out there. And what the hell is this referee doing? Dad, please! You don't need to comment on everything. Just watch the game. You idiot, are you blind or something? This ref is blind. I don't know the rules to this stupid game, but that had to have been against them. Mike, stop that. You're causing a scene. Look, everyone is staring at us from all over the bleachers. Let him stare. What the hell do I care if they do that? They should get an eyeful of this idiot ref before looking at me. Look at those stupid shorts. What is he supposed to be? A boy scout? Dad, Harry is right. Please cut it out. You're making a scene. You're not supposed to be saying that kind of stuff when you're here to watch. I will say whatever I want to say. This is a free country, and I fought to keep it that way. You think these kids can't handle a bit of noise from the sidelines? This is exactly the kind of thing these wisses playing soccer would get upset about, isn't it? You all chose a stupid game to play. Go cry to your mommies and tell them that one old man hurt your feelings with his words. What a disgrace. I can't believe that I woke up early this morning to watch something as stupid as this. Oh no, the ref is coming over here. Mike, stop it right now. You're gonna get Tom in trouble for this. You can't be yelling like this the whole time. You, you, and you. You three are out of here. Get your stuff and leave the field right now. Which one is your son playing, huh? What's his number? Oh, don't do this, please. I'm sorry about him, but we'll make him stop, okay? Just don't take our son off the field. You've had your chance to get him to quiet down. I've been very patient with you, but enough is enough. Now, what number is your son? I'm begging you to not penalize the boy. He didn't do anything. How about we leave and come back when it's done? No, it is too late for that. I won't ask you again. What number is he? He's number 15. You can't kick us out of here. We're spectators and we can do what we like. No, you can't. And yes, I can kick you out of here. Number 15, get off the pitch. You're getting a suspension and you can thank your family for it. Now all of you, get out of here. This is a kid's game and you're ruining it for everyone else here. You should be ashamed of how you've conducted yourselves. You're not allowed to be at any of the games for three weeks. Then you can come back, but only then. Then I will see you in three weeks to give you another piece of my mind, you damn idiot. Mike, that's enough. You've done enough. Dad, what's going on? Why did they pull me off? I didn't even do anything. I'm sorry, son, but we have to get out of here. Ah! 
Mike, what the hell were you thinking? Have you lost your mind? You can't just go out there and abuse the players and referee like that. They're kids. They're just kids. This isn't a professional league where the players are used to that sort of thing. You were taking it way too seriously. They're just out there to have fun. They need to learn a thing or two. Did you see them running around there miles apart from each other? I thought this was supposed to be a contact sport, but as soon as one of them got the ball, the others just let him run off with it. I can't just sit by while that kind of idiocy is going on. I told you that sport isn't about having fun. It's about competing and seeing who's the best. But from what I saw, none of them were worth anything at all. Not a single damn player. And what was that ref doing, too? How does he think he has the power to throw us out of there, huh? It's because he does. He can, and now Tom has a suspension. This was the first match of the season, and you ruined it for him. Now he's out for three whole games. You have no idea how hard he practiced for this season. He was so ready to do well this year. And now, thanks to his grandpa, he can't even play. You embarrassed him. Who wants their friends to see their granddad behaving like that from the sidelines? Aren't you ashamed of yourself? I never should have invited you to this game. That makes me the idiot. But you've ruined this for your grandson. I hope you're damn well happy. Harry, you don't need to talk to my dad like that. Maybe he went a bit overboard, but don't you blame it all on him. And he's right. That ref could have at least given us a warning or something. But instead, he just came straight over and ejected us. Are you really going to take his side in this? Did you just see the same thing I did? The ref was completely right to do what he did. He put up with that for half the game before he made a decision. I would have made the same one. I'm just sorry that Tom had to get kicked off. Of course you would have made the same decision as that idiot. You're just the same as him. You're not a real man and can't act like one either. Okay, Dad. That's enough. Both of you. That's enough. Dad, you need to go home. Say hi to Mom for me and we'll see you soon. Harry, get in the car. We're going home. And upstairs as soon as we're back. We need to talk. Tom, get in the back seat and go to your room once we're home. How can you talk to my dad like that? And in front of Tom, too! Are you out of your mind? You're supposed to be a role model for Tom and show him how to behave! Am I out of my mind? What is that supposed to mean? Are you out of your mind? Did you hear the kinds of things he was yelling? He made such a scene in front of everyone. Tom must have been wishing that he could just sink into the ground and disappear. All of his friends were there and so were their parents. Imagine how he feels right now. You know how my dad is. Sure, he said some things that he shouldn't have said, but that doesn't mean you can tell him that he should be ashamed of himself or blame him for what happened to Tom either. And why not? He should be ashamed of himself. He's a grown man acting like that in public. And it is his fault what happened to Tom. It's completely his fault. Are you trying to say that it was someone else's? I'm saying that you shouldn't just yell at him and blame him for it in the car park. You are no better than him after that. What do you think people saw? They saw you yelling at an old man. Do you think that's a good look? I don't care what they think of me. I'm only thinking of Tom. Do you have any idea how excited he's been for this upcoming season? He tried so hard at all of his training days. He put so much effort into this. And now, because of your dad, he's banned for the next three games. He can't even go there to watch and support his team. That's all because of Mike. Are you even thinking about your son at all? Well, who was it that invited my dad to the game in the first place? That was you, if I recall correctly. You don't want to take any responsibility for that, then? How was I supposed to know that he was going to act like that? And you told me that you also thought it was a good idea. This was supposed to be a good chance for him to bond with his grandson, and look at what he did instead. And he even promised to not bring up the topic of playing football either, and could he even keep that promise? Of course not. Now, he's not just saying that sort of thing to our son only, but to everyone else. Give him a break! He grew up in a different time. Things were different back then, and there are some things that he sees now that he doesn't like. 
We also grew up in a different time. Everyone of different ages grew up in a different time. My dad grew up in a different time. He's the same age as Mike and you don't see him going out there and acting like that, now do you? You can't just always use that same excuse to defend him. He might have grown up when things weren't like they are now, but he needs to get used to how they are. Oh, so your parents are just so much better than mine. Is that what it is? Bill doesn't act like my dad and he is automatically better than him, is he? Well, I didn't see him there at the game. My dad was there. Where was yours? That is not what I'm saying at all. There's no comparisons being made, but if my dad and Mike are the same age, then you can't use that as an excuse to defend your dad. And the only reason my parents weren't there is because dad was taking mom to the doctor for a checkup. Whatever. I'm just telling you that you need to stop acting like this towards my dad. You need to respect him, even if there are some differences between you. After today, I don't have any respect for him. How can I respect someone like that? You don't care how he talks to me, but all of a sudden I just have to bow to him and let him walk all over me? You don't have to do that, but you can't talk to him like you did today. I want you to go and apologize to him. You have got to be kidding me. He needs to come here and apologize to Tom. I don't care how he acts towards me. I'm an adult. I can take whatever snarky comments he has to send my way. But I don't want him around Tom anymore. He's going to be a bad influence on him. He didn't care that Tom got ejected and banned. He said that he would be back to do it all again. You cannot keep my dad away from his grandson. That is completely out of the question. And I never wanted to before now. I was the one trying to defend him to Tom. But this is too much. Do you not care about our son? Can't you see how this sort of thing might affect him as he is growing up? Of course I care about our son. Don't you dare say that I don't. But he can't be kept away from his grandfather. Or what? Should he only be allowed to interact with your family because they're so much better than mine? I never said that even once. I have never said anything even close to that. Why do you keep shifting the conversation there? Okay, let's just calm down for a second. All I'm saying is that I don't like the way he behaves in front of Tom. He is still a young kid, and it's the people closest to him who are going to influence the way he grows up. I'm not sure that Mike is the best influence there is. Uh, can't you see where I am coming from? Maybe a little, but that doesn't mean that we should keep the two of them apart. Then what do you suggest? What can we do to make this better? What can we do to make sure that Mike gets to see Tom, but doesn't act like that around him? I don't know! Maybe nothing! Maybe it's fine just as it is. He's been like this around Tom for the last 10 years and there hasn't been a problem. Why are you making it into such a big deal now? Because it's never been a problem before, but it is now. This is not the same as it was when Tom was four or five years old. I'm sick of this. We're going around in circles. I'm going to step out for a while and get some fresh air to clear my mind. But I meant what I said. You're not keeping my dad away from our son. And I still want you to apologize to him. Hey, kiddo. How are you doing? Are you holding up okay? How do you think? Look at what happened today. I hate this. I felt so stupid having to walk off like that. I didn't even get through the first game of the season without getting banned. And I didn't even do anything. Why am I being punished for something that I didn't do? Why couldn't they have just kicked Mike out? He was the only one doing something wrong. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but try to calm down a little, okay? I know that what happened isn't fair, but you shouldn't be yelling. Why not? I heard you and Mom yelling from the other room. Why do you get to yell and I don't? You heard us? Oh, I'm sorry, son. You weren't supposed to hear that. I didn't realize that we were being so loud. Listen, your mom and I are going to step out for a little while, so I need you to stay here and hold down the fort, okay? Will you be okay by yourself for a while? I'll be fine, but where are you going? Your mom is just going out for some fresh air, and I'm going to go and see my dad for a bit. You're going to see Grandpa Bill? Why? Can't you bring me with you too? Not this time. I'll bring you along the next time I go and visit him, though. 
there's just a few things I need to talk to him about. I won't be long, though. Uh, maybe just an hour, or maybe a little longer. Let's talk about this all properly when I get back, okay? And remember, I'm on your side. Sure, Dad. Okay. I know you are. Hey, Dad. Uh, sorry to drop in on you like this. Harry, it's good to see you. I don't mind at all. It's not like you to come without calling first, though. Yeah, I know. I hope I'm not getting in the way, though. Getting in the way? <laughs> don't be ridiculous. You know your mom and I are always happy to see you. How is she anyway? Uh, what did the doctor say? Oh, she's just fine. Just taking a rest in the bedroom. It was just a checkup and everything seems normal, but they took some blood to get some tests done and she's a little lightheaded from that. She said she just needed to take a nap and then she'll be right as rain again. That's good, uh, but why did they need the blood tests? Are they looking for something in particular? No, 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 not at all. Just a regular procedure type of thing. It's always better to know in advance than have something nasty sneak up on you. I guess you're right. I don't want anything to happen to her, so I'm glad that she's taking care of herself. Uh, sit down, I'll make some coffee. But what are you doing here? Didn't Tom have his first soccer game today? I thought you guys would all still be out at the pitch. Did the time change or something this season? No, uh, it didn't change, and, well, that's kind of the reason why I'm here to talk to you. Oh no, this doesn't sound good. Uh, was he upset that I wasn't able to make it? Uh, did you tell him that I wanted to be there, but I had to take your mom to the doctor? Uh, don't worry, he's not upset about it. Uh, he knows you would have been there, and I did tell him about the doctor as well. Uh, no, this is something else that happened. It's much worse. Much worse. Well, uh, let's hear it then. Let me fill you in on what happened, but I think I need some advice from you on how to sort all of this out afterwards. Mike came to the game today. You mean June's dad? Uh, that's quite a surprise. I thought he always hated soccer. I would have never expected him to show up at one of the games. He's never done that before. He did. I mean, he still does. But they were over for dinner last week, and I thought that I would invite him. Especially since you weren't going to be there. I thought that this would be a nice way for him to spend some more time with Tom, you know? Show some interest in what his grandson wanted to do. That's a nice idea. He should show interest in Tom, while Tom is still young and wants to spend time with his grandparents. Before long, he'll grow up and we'll be lucky to even get to talk to him. I don't think Tom will be like that when he gets older. He loves spending time with you. Anyway, well, I thought it was going to be a good idea to have Mike there, but it wasn't at all. What happened? So, you know how Mike has always been the kind of man's man sort of thing. He always used to say stuff about me and my job and how it's not real. How I should get a real job so that I can support the family and all the rest of it. Remember me telling you about that? Yeah, you used to say that sometimes, but I thought you had gotten over that sort of thing. Yeah, I have. I don't care what he says to me at all. But now he started being like that towards Tom, too. He was never like that before, but I guess now that Tom is at the age where he's playing sports or whatever, he started being like that towards him. He always mentions how soccer isn't a real sport, or how it's only played by wimps, and how Tom needs to step up and play a real man's game like football or baseball. You mean he says that directly to Tom's face? Surely not. That's exactly what I mean. Tom doesn't like it, and he even told me that he didn't. He wasn't excited at all when I told him that it was Grandpa Mike and not Grandpa Bill who was over for dinner last week. Anyway, after dinner, I talked to him about it and asked him not to be that way, uh, to think a little bit more about what Tom wants and be there for him as his grandfather, you know? Well, he told me that he didn't agree with this soft-handed approach, but agreed to not mention football anymore, at least so that it didn't turn Tom off the game in the future. Well, uh, the reason may not be the best, but it's a start, isn't it? Yeah, I was hopeful too. That's why I thought it would be okay to invite him to the game. If he saw Tom out there doing his best and having fun, I thought that he would change his mind a little bit. 
And by the fact that you're here right now, I'm guessing that things didn't go that way, did they? Not even close. He was there on the sidelines abusing the players, abusing the referee, abusing the sport as a whole. Oh, good lord. June and I tried to get him to quiet down, but he didn't listen. Everyone was looking at us, and he kept it up for almost half the game. And then what happened? And then the ref decided that he had finally had enough of us and came over and ejected all of us, including Tom. He got kicked off the field and banned for three matches. Oh no, the poor boy. He must have been devastated. I'm sure he was. I could see it in his eyes, even though he didn't say anything. Have you talked to him about it yet? What did he have to say? No, I haven't talked to him yet. I will when I get home. The main thing I have a problem with is that afterwards, June and I had an argument about it all. I told her that what her dad did was unacceptable and that he shouldn't be around our son if he can't treat him with respect. She told me that I had no right keeping her father away from his grandson and basically took his side. Oh, and I forgot to mention that I did yell at Mike a bit in the car park after we got kicked out. And she was not too happy about that. She said I had no right to talk to him like that and that I should apologize to him. She really took his side? Even though it affected Tom like that? That's what I said. I can't believe that she would side with him when it comes to our son. I get it if it was just me who had a problem with him, but not when it comes to Tom. He always has to be the number one priority. At least, that's what I think. And you're right to think that. That's how all parents should think. Yeah, well, anyway, now she's demanding that I apologize to Mike, and then she stormed out of the house. What am I supposed to do? I need to be on Tom's side in this. I can't just go up to her old man and say sorry as though I'm some little kid. She always defends him by saying that he grew up in a different time, but so did you, and you've never been like that. I just don't know what to think when I see her sidelining Tom like that. I need to be there for him, especially now. I can't just act as though what Mike did wasn't wrong. I don't think Tom would ever look at me the same after that. But if I don't apologize to Mike, then I don't know what I'm going to do about June. That's quite a mess you've gotten yourself into, and all over a friendly Saturday soccer game. Yeah, although it wasn't very friendly today, I can tell you that much. So, any ideas on what I should do? How am I supposed to balance this one out? I really have no idea on what I'm supposed to do. Well, you know I wasn't there and don't know anything apart from what you told me. But maybe first just talk to Tom about it and see what he wants to do. He might only be 10, but that doesn't mean he doesn't have his own ideas about what's right and wrong and all the rest of it. Unless you talk to him, you won't know what you should do to support him. And at the very least, maybe don't go inviting Mike to any more games. You can be damn sure I won't be doing that. The problem is keeping him away from it. He said that he would be back after the ban to do the same thing. Oh dear, that's not what I was expecting to hear. Oh, okay, Dad. I think I'll just talk to Tom about it. I'm sure I'll find the answer that way. Sorry I couldn't be of too much help to you. No, you were. It was good to get it out and hear myself say everything. But I think I'll be able to come up with a solution on my drive home. Thanks, Dad. And say hi to Mom for me when she wakes up from her nap. Hey, can I come in? I just got back from Grandpa Bill's. Yeah, come in. You were quick. I told you that I wouldn't be long, didn't I? Listen, I just wanted to talk to you about what happened today at the field. I'm really sorry things turned out that way. I'm the one who invited Mike. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. I really didn't imagine that things would turn out this way. I wanted him to see you play. I thought that he might change his mind about the game afterwards. I was wrong. I know that you didn't want this to happen, Dad. I know it's not your fault, Dad. But why does he have to be like that? Why couldn't he just watch? Or if he didn't like it, he could have left. Isn't that why adults have cars? So that they can leave or go places whenever they want to? Everyone was making fun of me when they found out that it was my grandpa. And now I'm banned for the next three games and I didn't even do anything! 
I know, I know. It really sucks. And you were so excited for the season as well. I tried so hard at every single practice. I don't know if I even want to go back. Everyone's going to laugh at me for what happened today. Hey now, don't you say that you don't want to go back. You love soccer. And you can still go to the practices. They only banned you from the games. You'll just have to be patient and take this time to get better so that the team will have their star player in good form when your ban is up. Yeah, but it's going to be so embarrassing playing again. Everyone knows. I know everyone is going to laugh at me at practice. And what's the point of practicing now? Maybe the coach will just bench me from now on. You know that he won't bench his star player. And the point of practicing is still to get even better. You don't want to get rusty, do you? But it's also nothing that you did. There is nothing for you to be ashamed about. Mike is the one who should be ashamed. The other kids might laugh for a little bit or tease you, but it's not the end of the world. You can bounce back from this. I know it isn't the end of the world, but this sucks anyway. You know how I said that I heard you and Mom yelling from the next room? I heard her say that we need to go and apologize to Grandpa Mike. Is that true? Do we really have to go and do that? I don't want to say sorry. I didn't do anything to be sorry for. Well, your mom said that I need to go and apologize. I was the one who was yelling at Mike. I'm sorry that you had to see that. I shouldn't have lost my cool like that. You don't have to say sorry for anything. You're right that you didn't do anything that you should say sorry for. But you stood up for me by yelling at him. He was the one doing something bad. Are you going to say sorry to him? I don't think you did anything bad. Why should you say sorry if you didn't do anything wrong? I thought you only say sorry when you hurt someone. It's a little bit more complicated than that. Sometimes saying sorry can stop things from getting worse than they are, even if you didn't really do anything wrong. You'll realize that as you get older. There will be many times like that in your life, and it's up to you to decide whether it's worth it to say sorry or not. I don't know just yet if I'm going to apologize to Mike. I wanted to talk to you and see what you wanted to do. You're the one who this is affecting the most. What do you want to do about it? I know that you must still be angry and upset about this right now, but you should start to think about what to do as well. I don't know what to do. What am I supposed to do? Nothing that I do will get me unbanned anyway. But I do know that I just don't want him at my games anymore. He said that he was going to come back and do the same thing. He's not really going to do that, is he? I'll just get banned again before I even get to play. Dad, you have to stop him from coming. He never even came before, and now he only wants to go again to cause more trouble. I know, don't worry, he won't be coming to any more of your games. If there's one thing that I can make sure of, that's gonna be it. I won't let him be there. Listen, I have an idea, but you can say no if you want. I think it's the best way to have him not come anymore, and at the same time, it might even earn his respect a little bit. Do you really think there is something that will work like that? What is your idea? I'm not sure if it'll work like that or not, but I think it's worth a try all the same. Why don't the two of us go to Grandpa Mike's together, and you can tell him that you don't want him there? That way, he can hear it from you. He won't listen to me, and then he'll see that you're a real man who can stand up for himself. And that you don't need to play football to prove it. If he hears it from you, I think it'll get through to him. Will that be okay? Won't I get in trouble for talking to him like that? I'm not telling you to be rude to him. Just tell him how you feel. If he hears it from you, then he should be able to understand what he did. And don't worry, I'll be there with you this whole time. You can do this. Okay, I will try. But what if it doesn't work? What if he gets angry? Even if it doesn't work, you can at least hold your head high, knowing that you tried your best. Now, let's get going. Well, look who thought they could come knocking on my door. What do you think you're doing here, and you didn't even call? Do you really think that you can just show up here whenever you want to? Hello, Mike. Sorry to show up without letting you know in advance. But can we come in? There's a few things I think we need to talk about. No, actually, you damn well can't come into my house. 
if there's something you need to tell me, then you can tell me right here on this porch. Okay, that's fine with us too. We can do it out here just as well as inside. Obviously, we wanted to talk about what happened today at the soccer game. I think you'll agree that there are a few things that need to be said about it. I don't know if there's anything that needs to be said, or there is only one thing that you need to say to me. Have you come here to apologize? Because that's the only thing I want to hear coming out of your mouth from now on. You can apologize to me for what you said to me, and for making me watch that god-awful excuse for a sport as well. Never in my life have I let someone like you speak to me in that kind of way. If you're not here to apologize, then you can get the hell out of my house. You are not welcome on my property. We are not here to apologize, but we won't leave until we have said what we came here to say. After that, though, we will leave. God, fine. You have five minutes of my time. I'm not going to waste any more of it on you today. God knows that I've wasted enough of it as it is. What do you want? I think that the way that you behaved today was unacceptable. You had no right to embarrass Tom like that, or to behave like that towards the other players. It was just a weekend league for kids. There was no need to start yelling at anyone the way you did. And that's not to even mention the referee as well. He's just a volunteer, you know? He's not getting paid to put up with that sort of thing. I believe what I said to all of them, and I will do it again too. That idiot deserved a good earful from me. Imagine the nerve of him waving those little cards around, thinking that he can just tell me what to do. No, I don't regret anything that I said or did today. I was right and I will stand by it. No, that won't be happening, not under any circumstances. You're not showing up there again. Look, maybe I went a little too far in the car park, but I still do think that what I said needed to be said, just maybe not in such a heated way. The two of us are adults, and we should have acted as such, especially around children. That sounds like an apology to me, but you'd better say it straight and proper if you want me to accept it. Don't mistake me, please. I'm not apologizing. I'm just saying that maybe I should have handled it better in front of Tom. That's all. Now, Tom has something he wants to tell you as well. Go on, Tom. You can do it. I'm right here. Grandpa, I... Uh... I really don't like what you did today. I was embarrassed and the other kids were laughing at me. I know you don't like soccer, but I do. I love playing soccer and I want to keep playing it. Now I can't play because of you for three games. I was so excited for this season. I worked really hard. I don't want you to come to any of my games anymore. I don't want you there yelling at people. I don't want to be banned again for something that I didn't do. I don't think it was fair. Good job, Tom. That's the way. Oh, I see what is going on here. You think you can pull the wool over my eyes with this little stunt, do you? Harry, you poor excuse of a man. You don't want me to be around anymore, but you're too much of a coward to come and tell it to my face. So instead, you feed your little pipsqueak some lines and have him tell me instead of you. This is unbelievable. You should be here to apologize to me, and this is what you do instead? You're a disgrace. I do what I want, and neither you nor that little runt of yours is going to tell me otherwise. Now come over here, you damn idiot. I'll show you what I think of a man who can't even speak his own mind. Grandpa, stop! Dad! Harry! I'm so sorry about what happened. I don't know what Mike was thinking. He's not usually that kind of person. How is your nose? Is it okay? Thanks, Clara. The nose is doing okay. The bleeding has stopped at least, but I don't think anything is broken. I can expect there to be some bruising around my eyes though, I suppose. This will be a fun one to have to explain to people. I really am dreadfully sorry. I would have called you earlier, but I had my hands full trying to calm Mike down. I tried to get Mike to call you and apologize as well, but you know what he's like. He just won't listen to me. He says that he won't say sorry because he's not. I feel horrible about all of this. I promise that I will convince him to go over to yours and apologize for all this mess. He had no right doing that. 
No need to worry yourself too much, Clara. I don't expect him to do anything of the sort. I know that his pride won't allow it. But have you heard anything from June at all? She left the house a few hours ago, but she hasn't been back yet. I haven't heard anything from her either. I'm sure she's fine. She needed to clear her head a little bit. I didn't want to disturb her by calling her. She gave me a text a little bit back and told me that she was going to stop in at our house. She must be on her way now, I guess. But she did say that she was going to stay the night. Is everything okay? Did you two have a fight about something? Everything is okay, Clara. We had a little argument, but nothing for you to worry about. Tell her that I'll see her tomorrow. Harry! What the hell were you thinking? I told you to go and apologize to my dad, and what do you do? You bring our son along with you and antagonize him even more! You really are out of your damn mind. What kind of game do you think you're playing here? And then you have mom calling you and saying sorry? And for what? This isn't how you treat my family. I won't stand for it. What the hell are you talking about? Do you know what he did? I brought Tom over there so that he could tell Mike how he felt about what happened at the game. Tom doesn't want Mike at the games. And then do you know what Mike did? He punched me in the face, June, in front of our son. And maybe he was right too. Maybe he's right that you do need to man up a little bit. He's 60 years old. What kind of punch can he throw at you? It doesn't matter that he's 60. He's still got a good one on me. And it's not even about that. I don't care that he hurt me or whatever, but he punched me in front of Tom. I just can't stand for this anymore. First, I was fine with him just not being at the games and keeping his mouth shut about football. Not that he managed to do that for very long, but that's not enough. I will not allow him to be around our son when he's acting like this. He's violent, he verbally abuses people, and he is simply not a good person for Tom to be seeing as he grows up. I told you that you have no right to cut him out of our son's life. You have no right. You don't get to make those sorts of decisions on your own. It's not just me either. Tom doesn't want to see him anymore. How do you think he feels after he saw me get hit by his grandpa, who he already doesn't like too much? I'm telling you that this is it. He has gone too far now, and I will not let him near Tom. I'm drawing a line in the sand, and I will not back down from this. You won't back down, huh? So it doesn't matter to you that this is my family that you're talking about? I don't have a say in this at all. Tom is my son, too. He's not just yours. I know that he is, but sometimes I'm not sure if you do. You haven't taken his side in this at all, when your dad is clearly the one in the wrong. You need to be there for him, and you're not. Where were you all day yesterday? I went out to clear my head, just like I told you. Then I stayed at my parents' house because I didn't want to be around you. Fine, but what about Tom? You didn't think that you should be there for him? At least ask him how he was feeling? If he was upset about not being able to play for the next three weeks, did you not think about him at all? He's not a baby, Harry. He doesn't need me to be there to hold his hand all of the time. This is one thing that Dad is right about. You coddle him too much. You need to let him go a bit. I'm not asking you to hold his hand. I'm just asking you to ask him if he's okay. Is that too much for you to do? Does your dad always have to come first, even before your own son? It's not about that. Stop asking me those kinds of questions. Anyway, I told you what needs to happen. I will not allow you to disrespect my family like this. You need to apologize to my dad. And now so does Tom. You shouldn't have gotten him involved like you did. This one is on you. There is no way in hell that I'm going to apologize to that old crank. And neither is Tom. All he did was tell him how he felt. And he did it well. He has no need to go back on what he said for that man. Old crank. Are you seriously speaking about him like that? Listen to me, Harry. And listen to me very carefully. You get in your car right this instant and go and apologize to him or we're done. I will not be married to a man who cannot respect my family and who wants to cut my dad out of our son's life. I will not do it. Do you understand me? Now get your keys and go. No, June, I won't do that. 
I refuse to do that. What did you just say now? I said I won't do that. If you want a divorce over this, then fine, we can get a divorce. I don't want to be married to a woman who can't get over herself and her dad and protect her own son when she needs to. That man has no business being in Tom's life. I will take him and raise him on my own. You? You think that you will get Tom? Are you out of your mind? All you're going to get out of this divorce is a life of loneliness. Tom is coming with me. I'm going to get him and take him to my parents' house. We'll stay there while we figure things out. You are not taking him, June. He is my son and I have always been the one to put him first. And you're definitely not taking him to any place that Mike is. Don't even try. Do you really think you have a say in this? How do you think the judge will decide on this case? They always side with the mother. You have no chance. That's not true. They often side with the mother, but in this case, I'm sure they will side with me. I will stake everything on it. Keep living in whatever fantasy land you're in right now. I'm leaving. Tom, get out here. We're going to your grandparents' house. I don't want to go with you, Mom. What did you just say to me? I said that I don't want to go with you. I want to stay here with Dad. Then to hell with the both of you. You can keep him for now, but this isn't how things will end. I will see you in court. I will get custody of Tom, and I will gouge you for everything that you have when it comes to child support. And that's not a threat. It's a promise. Hey, kiddo. Jump in the back. Uh, your boots aren't too muddy now, are they? They're pretty bad today, actually, Dad. It rained a lot. My uniform is kind of messed up, too. Oh, I can see that now. You know what? It doesn't matter. Hop in the front and I can clean the car later. How was practice today? Uh, did everything go well? It was great. I had a lot of fun and I scored this amazing goal. Ah, oh, you should have been there to see it. Oh, that is great. I wish I was. Maybe you can try to do another one like that at the game this week? Your grandpa, Bill, would love to see it as well. I'll try, but no promises. It wasn't the kind of trick that you can just pull whenever you want to. It would be cool to do all the time, though. Okay, you just do your best and I won't hold it against you. Dad, the kids finally stopped making fun of me today for what happened with Mike. Mike? Uh, not Grandpa Mike. I don't want to think of him as my grandpa anymore. Not after he hit you. Oh, I see. Well, it's good that they're not teasing you anymore. It took a while. Yeah, it did. But it got less often over time. Today was the first day that no one mentioned it even once, though. I guess you can't blame them. I mean, it must have been pretty funny for them, don't you think? Seeing some crazy old guy yelling on the side about football or whatever else. Yeah, it might have been funny if it wasn't my grandpa. I guess I would have acted like the others did if it was someone else's grandpa. I know, I know. But that's all behind us now. Let's try not to think about Mike too much anymore. Dad? Can I say something? Yeah, of course. Anything you want. Oh, what's up? I just wanted to say thanks for standing up for me back then. I know that I didn't say anything really, but I am glad that you were on my side. I'll always be on your side, Tom. That's a promise. I know you will be. And I'm sorry about Mom. I didn't want you two to break up. But I am glad that I am living with you. And I can still see her as well, so I guess it's not so bad. That's alright, Tom. That's what I'm here for. I will always be here for you. And guess what? What? Your grandparents are over for dinner. They cooked, so I hope you're hungry. You mean Grandpa Bill and Grandma Irene? Who else would it be? Now let's go home. You just know they've made something delicious for us. June and I got a divorce not long after she walked out that day and went to stay with her parents. I say not long, but what I mean is that we started the process not long after. The divorce itself was long and painful, and she did everything she could to try and have custody of Tom. 
but this was something that I wouldn't budge on. And as I knew I would in my heart, I was the one who won final custody of him. Of course, he still gets to see his mom, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I never wanted to keep him away from anyone in the family, but I just couldn't let Mike be around him in good faith anymore. The judge seemed to agree. Once the evidence came out that he attacked me in front of Tom, that was when the case started going in my favor. I think it also helped that I didn't push for any child support either. But who really knows how those things are decided? I didn't want to ruin June's life or anything. I just wanted to make sure that Tom was growing up in the best environment that he could. And that was not around a man who belittled him and displayed violence in front of him either. It was hard to part with June over this. We had a good relationship the entire time we were married. But when it comes to Tom, I just can't choose anything over him. There can be no thought of compromise when it comes to my son. Now, I have my parents over more than before, and they help me look after him when I'm busy with work. They don't live too far and are happy to help out whenever they can. And you can imagine that Tom is more than thrilled to see them so often these days. Clara still comes around from time to time, and I don't mind that at all. She was always nice and never at all like Mike. As you might expect, we never heard from Mike again, and Clara never mentions him in front of us. Apparently, even when Tom does go over there, Mike just locks himself in his room and doesn't even come out to say hello to him. It's no big loss for Tom, but it proves my point that he is not the kind of person who should be influencing a boy at that age. We have a long road ahead of us and many more milestones to reach, but I will be there with my son, supporting him every single step of the way. Hi, Arabella. This is Eleanor, Charles' mother. I've heard a lot about you from my son. In fact, he suggested I arrange a lunch with you so that we can get to know each other. Hi, Eleanor. It's so nice to hear from you. Is it okay to call you that, or would you prefer me to call you something else? Mrs. Ringdale is fine. Perhaps once we become more acquainted with each other, you can call me by my first name. Sure, I can totally understand that. Well, Mrs. Ringdale, it's great to hear from you. I've heard a lot of great things about you from Charles. And he's also told me about arranging a lunch with you, too. I think it's a great idea. So I'm glad to have gotten your message. Good. Then let's arrange a date to have this lunch, shall we? Perhaps you already know how devastated I am about your engagement to my son. But if you are the woman he chose, then I suppose I have to meet you in person and see who you are. And more importantly, see if you were truly fit for him. Oh, Mrs. Ringdale, I had no idea that you were devastated about the engagement. I guess Charles missed that part out when we spoke earlier. I'm sorry that you feel that way, and I hope that I can help you change your mind about that. That's what I'm hoping for, too. And mind you, I have high expectations, so you might just be in for a nice surprise. Oh, really? What do you mean by that exactly? Never mind, you'll find out in due time. Anyway, you're lucky that you didn't see me upset when I heard about Charles's engagement. But I want you to know that I was terribly upset. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. We didn't even know that he was seeing someone. And then all of a sudden we hear that he's engaged. Right, I can understand your point of view. We did talk about that before, and I did suggest for him to tell you all about me. But I just felt as if I was being too pushy about it, so I just kept quiet. Well, you should have kept on insisting on it. Then this wouldn't have been such a hard blow on me. Yes, I agree. You're right, Mrs. Ringdale. Is there anything I can do to help? Well, you'd better be the perfect fit for my son. And not only him, but for my other children, too. You mean your two daughters, Anna and Debbie, right? I've heard great things about them through Charles, too. I can't wait to meet them in person. And of course, you too. Right, well, let's get back to organizing a date then. Sure, when does it suit you? How about this weekend? That's the day after tomorrow. Okay, so Saturday the 30th. That's great, that works for me. I can do any time from as early as 11 a.m. Okay, well, let's make it 12 p.m. then. Why don't you come over to our house for lunch? Oh, really? To your house in Levittown? 
Yes, do you need my address? Oh, I can just ask Charles for that. All right, so see you this Saturday at 12 p.m. sharp at my house, and we'll cook lunch for you. Oh, wow, that sounds great. Do you need me to come over to help you prepare the lunch? I don't mind at all. I'm free all day anyway. No, absolutely not. We won't be needing your help. I don't want a stranger to step foot in my kitchen. And you're not family just yet. Oh, sure, you're right. No, I'm not. Okay, well, thank you for inviting me over to your home anyway. It's really kind of you, Mrs. Ringdale. Good. Show some respect like that and you'll get far in this family. Right. I guess I'll see you in two days then. Wonderful. I'll pass you on to my daughters since they seem eager to have a word with you. Oh, really? Okay. They'll contact you separately on their phones. Okay, great. Thanks again, Mrs. Ringdale. Bye now. Bye. Hi, Arabella. Hi. This is Anna, Charles's sister, but you probably know that already. I'm also with Debbie, too. She's sitting right next to me, and she says hi. Oh, then hi to the both of you. Your mom said that you guys would be texting me. Sure she did. What did she say about us? Oh, no, nothing besides that you'd be texting me. Oh, okay. Did she say anything else? Not really. I mean, not about you guys or anything. Oh, and what's that supposed to mean? Well, she mentioned that she was a bit upset about our engagement. Ah, you and her brother? Her special sweet boy, she likes to call him. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess she's against it, but hopefully I can make her change her mind about that. What do you mean? Well, once we meet, hopefully she'll see that I'm normal and that I'm a good person. Oh, okay. Well, I hope you realize that she's not the only person you have to impress. Oh, how do you mean? Well, you've got to pass our tests too, right? We're his sisters after all. Pass the test? What test? You'll see, you'll see, soon enough. Oh, okay. So, are you guys both against our engagement, too? Well, he's the best brother that we could both ask for, too, right? He's been nothing but nice to us. He's always so protective, caring, he helps us out financially. He's practically your second dad. Oh, right. Yeah, that's good to hear that from you. He always tells me how much he cares for you guys. And speaking of your dad, will he be at the lunch, too? Excuse me? Why are you asking us that? Oh, well, I mean, if it's a family lunch, I just gathered that your dad would be there, too. It was just a simple question. Are you going to try and flirt with him or something? Because you'd better not, Arabella. He's our dad. Okay, sure. <laughs> Wait, I never said I would. I really didn't mean for it to come across like that. I just wanted to know if I was going to meet all of Charles's family. Well, you're lucky, because her dad isn't going to be there. He's got some work stuff to do. Oh, on a Saturday? Uh, yes. Is that a problem for you? Are you trying to imply something here? Are you looking down on her dad just because he's so hardworking that he has to work on a weekend? Oh, no, no, please. It's nothing like that at all. Sorry, I think I'll just keep my mouth shut from now. I don't want everything I say to get misconstrued any more than it is now. Good! You'd better shut your pie hole, Arabella. You're already super annoying and we haven't even met you. And you're trying to flirt with our dad? And you're feeling sorry for us to have a hardworking dad like him? No, what? That's not what I said at all. That's not fair. Just shut up! Debbie and I are going to keep a close eye on you, Arabella. You better watch your mouth and be on your best behavior this Saturday. Otherwise, you're not only not going to be welcomed in her home, but you're also not going to be welcomed to her family. Okay, sure. I'm sorry if I've upset you already. I really didn't mean for any of it. That's right. Keep apologizing until you learn how to talk to us. Okay, well... I guess I will see you this Saturday, then. 
I'm looking forward to it. And so are we. Not. Right. See you both, Anna and Debbie. Thanks for texting me today. It was nice getting to know you a bit here. Whatever, you floozy. See you Saturday and don't be late. Don't disrespect our mom by showing up late. You got that? Sure, I'll be there on time. Good. See you there then. Okay, talk to you later. Thanks. Hey, you. I just spoke to your mom and your sisters. They all texted me. Hey, hey. Oh, nice. How did it go? Did you speak to both Anna and Debbie? Yeah, it was mainly Anna texting, but apparently Debbie was sitting next to her or something. Ah, okay, so how did it go? Did you guys arrange to meet or something? Yeah, we decided to have lunch this Saturday. So this Saturday? Uh, that's way sooner than I thought. But I guess that's good, right? The earlier you guys meet, uh, the quicker you'll get to know each other. Sure, but by the way, I know your mom is a bit protective over you. You told me that before, but she sounded as if she was really upset with us being engaged. And I mean, like, really upset. Oh yeah? Uh, don't worry, though. She's real nice, really. She just comes across as a bit, uh, let's say, stern sometimes. Okay, I hope you're right. She sounded like she wanted to hang me off a pole or something. <laughs> nah, you should be fine. And your sisters? Anna sounded like I owed her or something. And she thought I wanted to flirt with your dad. All because I asked her if he was going to be there at the lunch on Saturday. <laughs> They're just messing around with you. They're just trying to make sure they have my back or something. They mean well, trust me. Really? Can I really trust you though, Charles? I'm a bit scared to meet them now, if I'm honest. Really? No, no, don't be. You'll see, once you meet them, they're normal. Given they're all chatty, but that's just them being girls, right? You'd know about that. <laughs> and they can be protective when it comes to me, because I'm the baby in the family. <laughs> that's how they've always seen me, but you've got nothing to worry about. It'll be fine, babe. Mmm, I really hope I can, Charles. I don't know why, but my gut says otherwise. Well, it's fine. Everything will be fine. Okay, well, anyway, what time do you finish work? Probably about 6 p.m.-ish tonight. I'll call you when I get home. Sure, you can come over to my apartment if you want, by the way. Or I can come to yours. That sounds nice, but you know the month end is always busy for me. I'm probably going to work at home tonight anyway. So there might not be any point. Ah, that's true. Well, okay, no worries. I'll see you when we go to your mom's house this Saturday then, right? Yeah, okay. I guess we still have another day to go, so I might ask you some questions about your family. Just so I can ask good questions for conversation or something. <laughs> You're thinking too much, babe. Just be yourself. Trust me. They'll all love you like I do, okay? Okay. Night-night, babe. Yeah, night-night, sexy. Kisses. Hey, babe, where are you? Oh my god, I just left your mom's house. I just literally stormed out. Where are you? Please come back and pick me up. Wait, whoa, what happened? Hang on, I'm on super low battery, so I can't call you. But tell me what's wrong. I only left for like 15 minutes with my dad. I know, and the minute you and your dad left, your mom and sister started basically harassing me. I swear, they made you and your dad leave together just to do this to me, too. They didn't want me and your dad in the same room or something. I felt it. You felt what? I felt that something was going on. They didn't even want me to meet your dad to begin with. So they made something up to make him go somewhere else while we're here. What? Don't be crazy. Mom wanted extra drinks for us, so she asked us to get it. Yeah, well, why didn't she just ask you to go? Why did she ask your dad to leave, too? I don't know, but I swear you're thinking too much. But I'm not. Remember how Anna thought I wanted to flirt with him? When I 100% wasn't even thinking of it? 
I swear she told her mom about it, and that's what made your dad leave the house. All right, all right. Let's just skip this part, because I still don't know what's going on here. Just come and pick me up. I want to go home. Why? What happened? We're not even at the store yet. We're still going to be another hour, maybe, uh, depending on the traffic. Just tell me what happened. Well, as soon as you guys left, they all started to bombard me with questions. But really rude, intrusive questions. Like what? Are you sure that they weren't trying to get to know you more? No, Charles. They asked me really personal questions. Things that I would only tell you or my best friends. Right from the get-go, she asked me at what age I lost my virginity and to who, etc. Really? No way. Yes way. And she asked me how many boyfriends I've had in the past. How long each relationship lasted. She called me a slut, too. No, come on. Really? My mom would never do that. But she did. And she asked me how much in savings I have, what kind of career I'm planning to have, whether I'm going to get promoted soon, what kind of grades did I get in high school, what my mom and dad and sisters are like, how well off are they, etc. Like, none of those questions are relevant. They didn't ask me anything about me, like what I like, our relationship, or anything like that. Oh man, B but everything was fine when we were all at the table. Well, not. That's what you thought. What do you mean? I mean, didn't you see anything going wrong? Didn't you see how they served me the smallest piece of that grilled chicken your mom made? Or were you too hungry to even notice what was happening? Oh no, babe, I didn't notice that at all. Did you really get that much of a small piece? Yes, and it's not even just that. Debbie served me the end bits of those roasted vegetables. I hardly had anything to eat. I swear they did it to me on purpose, Charles. I wish you had noticed this. They don't like me at all. Oh man, what the hell is going on? I still don't get it. How could they do this to you? Because they hate me. For some reason, they all do. What am I going to do? Well, babe, just hang tight. Can you go back inside the house? No, I don't want to. I told them that I thought they were all being a bit intrusive, and they gave me the worst stare and told me to get out. And to be honest, at that point, I was relieved that they told me to. I couldn't stand being in the same room as them. I don't know what they would have said to me or done to me. I'm still so hungry, you know? This is crazy! Oh my god, yeah, this is crazy. Man, listen, I'm really low with my phone battery. It's like less than 5%. I gotta save it. So I'll come back home as soon as I get the drinks, okay? Stay put, and I mean, I'd suggest for you to go back inside. But you don't want to, right? No, I don't. I can't. What am I supposed to do? Just ring the doorbell and beg them to let me back in when they kick me out? Well, yeah, I mean, you don't have to beg, right? Just tell them that you're cold outside. I don't even know why they did that to you. Neither do I. But they did. Just knock on the door or whatever and ask to go back inside. This is crazy to make you stand outside the house like this. Tell them that I'm coming back soon and then we can go back home. So just tell them to let you go back inside until me and dad come back. Okay, I'll see if that'll work. Okay, good. Just hang tight either way, okay? I'll be there soon. Okay, hurry. All right, all right. Yesterday was quite the eventful day, wasn't it, Arabella? We didn't know that you'd be the type to have drama follow you around wherever you go. Hi, Anna. Thanks for having me over yesterday. And I'm sorry for what happened yesterday. I honestly don't know what else to say. Well, there's no need for you to say anything here, Arabella. We got the information we wanted, and we all feel like we've gotten to know you a bit more. Whether that be good or bad. So no worries. We can call it water under the bridge. Really? Okay. Well, it was nice meeting all of you. It was too bad that I couldn't speak to your dad, but it was nice to talk to everyone else. You shut up about my dad! How many times do we have to tell you that you are not meant to be flirting with him? 
I wasn't. Anna, oh my god. Please can we drop this? I don't understand how you can ever think that I'd want to flirt with your dad. I'm engaged to your brother. And how is that going to stop you? Who knows what kind of floozy you are? Maybe you have a thing for older men. Maybe you have a thing for your boyfriend's dads. I don't. That's sick and so wrong. And why should we believe anything you say? Why would I even lie about that? Anyway, Anna, I just wanted to say thank you for yesterday. I wish things would have gone differently, but it is what it is. Exactly! What's happened can't be undone. So now you're just going to have to prove to us that you're worthy of our brother once again. What? What does that mean? It means that if I ask you for favors, you do it. And that way you can regain our trust again. Oh my god. What? Like, what? Are you asking me for a favor right now? Oh, I'm about to, Arabella. Okay, well, what is it? I need you to loan me some money. Okay, and exactly how much do you want to borrow? $5,000 or more, if you're feeling generous. What? That's a lot of money. Did you really mean 5000 or was that just an extra zero you mistyped? Oh no, I meant $5,000. And I meant it when I said you can lend me some more too. But what do you need that kind of money for? Do I have to tell you everything around here? Can I not ask my possible future sister-in-law for favors without having to explain absolutely everything? I didn't mean it like that, but I mean I'd like to know where my money is going to be spent, especially if it's that kind of huge amount. I just need to buy a few things, okay? Like what? Oh my god, Arabella, are you really going to ask me all of these questions? Well, like I said, I'd like to know what my money is going to be spent on. Oh my god, you're being so intrusive here. But I'm sorry to say this, but I don't think you're one to talk, especially after the kind of questions you asked me yesterday at lunch. And what's that supposed to mean? Well, you asked me really personal questions, like about my virginity and my mom and dad's income and whatever else. Those were really personal questions. And it was all part of us getting to know you. What don't you understand about that? Are you dumb? You can't call me dumb for wanting my privacy kept. That's not fair. Anyway, if you're asking me to lend you money, I don't think this is the right way to ask for it either. This isn't the kind of attitude you need to be showing me. Oh, so you think you're better than me now? Just because I asked you for a bit of help? Is that how you're going to play it? No, no, but it's just basic manners. I don't know. L look, listen, all right. All right, what? Are you going to lend me the money? You really need the money, right? Uh, yes. Why do you think I asked you? I wouldn't be asking you if I didn't need it, would I? Okay, and it's definitely $5,000 that you want. Yeah, 100%. But like I said, you can lend me more if you like. Okay, fine. Just give me your bank details so I'll wire the money over to you. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Thanks so much, Arabella. You're the best. You're totally the star. And you're totally in my good books now? Thanks a bunch. Well, at least I'm in your good books then. That's a good start. Okay, I'll send you my bank details now, so send it to me ASAP. That'll be super, super awesome. Okay, we will do. Okay, well, that was it for me. I'll text you again later, okay? Uh, okay. Thanks so much. Um, Arabella? Oh, hi, Debbie. How's it going? I know what you did, you know. And I don't appreciate it. Sorry, but what? What is this about? I told you I don't appreciate what you did, and I'm going to expect you to give me the same treatment. Debbie, sorry, I really have no idea what you're talking about. The money, Arabella. The money. You gave Anna $5,000, and I know about it. Oh, Debbie. I had no idea that you'd find out about it. I thought that was a personal matter that Anna needed to fix or something. She didn't tell me what she needed the money for, but I thought she was in trouble or something. Well, no, it wasn't. 
And I know about it too, okay? Okay? So what can I do to help? Well, isn't it obvious? What's obvious? I want some too, you bozo. What? Debbie, are you asking me for money? Yes, I am. I want $5,000 too. Wait, this is crazy. Your sister asked me because she really needed it. For whatever reason it was, I was only trying to help her out. Exactly. And now you gotta help me out, okay? But why do you need the money? What about your own money? I'm asking you because I don't have any. And we all know that you're rich enough as we figured out at the lunch the other day. You're like a junior doctor or something, right? Come on. If you can help save other people's lives, then surely you can help mine. Debbie, I save lives when they're in pain or when it's a matter of life and death. Yes, and I'm in pain too. Financial pain, don't you get it? Well, I only help people with physical pain. You don't even need the money, Debbie. Don't ask me for this favor. You're asking the wrong person. No, please. It's so unfair that Anna gets $5,000 and not me. What's there to be fair about? Debbie, I'm sorry, but no. $5,000 is a lot of money. It was hard enough to lend your sister that amount, and I'm not about to just give away another 5000 just like that. So what? Are you telling me that you're going to treat us differently? Just because Anna and I are a few years apart? Is that the way you're going to treat us from now on? And do you think my brother will appreciate that? Do you think my mom would allow that? What? This is going off topic now. I'm talking about how I refuse to lend you a huge amount of money when you don't even need it. And how do you know I don't need it? I do need it, actually. Oh, yeah? What do you need it for, then? I need it for medical bills, okay? I need it to pay for my medication and possibly surgery. Surgery? For what? Look, I didn't tell you about this and my mom and Anna weren't going to tell you either. But I have a weak heart, okay? I was born with it. I can't be put under too much stress, otherwise my heart basically might start to fail me. Are you being honest with me, Debbie? Because Charles has never mentioned anything about that to me. And we've been together for almost a year? Well, maybe he didn't want you to know about it. But I'm telling you that I was born with a weak heart, and the fact is you're also giving me a hard time right now. I feel like you're about to give me a heart attack or something. You're accusing me of lying to you, aren't you? What? No, I'm not. But this all just sounds too convenient. Well, whatever it sounds like to you, it's a serious issue for me. Now, are you going to lend me the money or what? Debbie, I need to speak to Charles about this first and see what he says. Why do you have to speak to him about this? What's it to him? This is my favor that I'm asking you and my heart issue. I don't want to make him worry about me any more than he does now. Don't tell him, okay? But I need to know that I can trust what you're saying. And I need to know that you're going to give it back to me, too. I will. Of course I will. Just answer me this. What exactly do you need the money for? Why $5,000? And when exactly are you going to pay me back? Oh my god, Arabella, really? Are you really asking me this? Did you ask Anna these questions, too? Debbie, this is a different issue. Are you telling me that you didn't ask her the same questions that you're asking me? Well, that was different. I didn't expect for her to ask me for money on the spot. And it was the day after I'd met you guys. So? You still lend her money, right? And are you just not gonna lend me money? Just my sister? You think that's fair? Debbie, please don't do this. This is so unfair on me. Unfair on you? It's way more unfair on me than you. You lend my sister $5,000 and you're refusing to lend me the same amount. Think about it. No, Debbie, don't try and twist things around here, okay? No, that's a fact and you know it. All I did was explain facts. Oh my god, so you really need $5,000. Yes, how many times do I need to tell you? Fine. 
fine, as in you'll lend me the money. If you really, truly need it, then I might, yes. But it would be nicer if you just let me know why and when you'll give it back. Oh my god, not this again. Did Anna tell you too? Because I don't think she did. No, she didn't, but I'm not talking to her here. I'm talking to you. Just lend me the money, Arabella. Stop it with these questions. Are you going to lend me the money or not? You want to be in my good books too, don't you? Debbie, fine. You can have the money. Really? Oh my god, you really mean that, Arabella? There's no turning back on this, okay? Oh my god, Debbie, you're making it easier to cancel this whole thing, you know? Okay, okay, then fine. I won't ask you any more questions. Just thank you. Thank you so much. You're awesome. Shall I send you my bank account details just like Anna did? Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Arabella. You're a real life savior. And I mean that. Sure you do. Thanks so much. Hey babe, listen, I know you're out drinking with the guys tonight, but I really need to speak to you. Hey babe, okay, but can it wait until I get home? I'll be back soon. Well, I know you well enough to know that you're gonna come home drunk and you're not gonna be awake enough to talk. <laughs> well, what is it? It's about Anna and Debbie. Uh, okay, about the whole money thing? I totally yelled at them real hard already. So you can't tell me to do that to them again. Because I'm not going to do it. No, I know you did and I wasn't going to ask you to do that. They haven't said anything to me since then anyway, so I don't think that you yelling at them worked. Alright, well, what is it? I thought of another idea. I think I should maybe talk to your mom about it. What? No. We talked about this, remember? We said that it's better to just keep this between us. You, me, Anna, and Debbie. There's no need to get mom involved in this. Or dad, for that matter, okay? It's all cool, babe. They'll give you the money back, and if they don't, then I will. Sure you will. You haven't even paid me back for all the money I've lent you up until now. Yeah, but that's different. This is about my sisters borrowing money from you, so of course I'll pay you back, okay? Well, okay, but I still think I should talk to your mom. I've been thinking about it, and I think it's for the best. Really? You're sure about that? I really don't want to get her involved. You know what she can be like, right? Yeah, but I honestly think she should get involved with this since it's about her two daughters. Who, by the way, are old enough to get their own jobs to earn their own money. I know, I know, but just look at the kind of economy we're in right now. It's tough times for everyone, right? Exactly. If it's tough for everyone, then that includes me too. It's not like the money I earn grows on trees, you know. I have to work for it and I work hard. This isn't fair on me. I feel like you're siding with your sisters over me too. What? No, babe, that's not true. I'm on your side, babe. But they're also my sisters too, okay? You gotta understand that I'm in a tough spot too. Sure, but I still want to talk to your mom about this and see what she says. Well, man, I don't see me being successful at stopping you anyway. So I might as well save both of our time and energy and just let you go ahead with it. Am I right or what? Uh, you're darn right. You know me well enough. Sure, <laughs> once you've set your mind on something, there is no stopping you, is there? Nope, I just thought I should give you a heads up anyway. Okay, well then just do what you think is right. If you think telling our mom about this whole lending you money situation is the best way to go about it, then have at it. Okay, but don't get mad at me. This is my money I'm dealing with, remember? Sure, and these are my sisters you're dealing with. Charles, come on! Alright, just be nice to her about it, okay? Sure, I need to get into her good books anyway, so I'll be putting my best foot forward with this. I still think it's better just to keep this to ourselves, you know? Sure, and I appreciate that, but let me do this my way. Alright, go on then. I'm gonna go back to having drinks with the boys. I'll talk to you later. Okay, sure. Enjoy. Mwah. Hi, 
name is this Ringdale. It's me, Arabella. Well, 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 this is perfect timing. Oh, is it? Sure it was. I was about to call you, but you got there first. Oh, should I call you then? Oh, no, no, it's fine. I prefer to text anyway. I just got off the phone, and it was a long phone call anyway. I'd rather not get on another potentially long phone call. Okay, so do you want to go first, or should I? Oh, sure. I just spoke to my daughters, you see. Oh, right. You mean the long phone call that you were talking about? Yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. What about them? What did you guys talk about? Well, I heard from them that they borrowed some money from you. And it wasn't just a few dollars either. Right. Mrs. Ringdale, that's exactly what I wanted to talk to you about. Oh, perfect. Maybe we're starting to think more alike now, huh? Uh, yeah, maybe. So, oh, I guess I interrupted you. I didn't mean to. Sure, no problem. Well, as I was saying, you lent them money, correct? Yeah, a total of $10,000, actually. So, 5000 each? So, I hear. Now, Arabella, perhaps that means you're more generous than I had expected from you. Oh, uh, well, I'll take that as a compliment. Sure, of course it is. You're really being generous to my daughters, and I truly find that a wonderful trait in you. Oh, gee, thanks, Mrs. Ringdale. Now, I suppose if you're great at being so generous, you wouldn't mind spreading more kindness now, would you? Sorry, I don't think I'm following you. What do you mean by that? Oh, I just mean that perhaps you could lend me some of that generosity in you as well. What do you mean? Do you mean you want me to lend you money as well? Well, you could put it like that, sure. What? Really? You want to borrow money off of me too? Well, let's not make it sound like we're leeching off of you and your money or anything. Because we all know that it's not like that. It's exactly like that, though, Mrs. Ringdale. No, Mrs. Ringdale, this is all so wrong. I came to text you because I wanted to consult you about this. I wanted to see what you thought of this situation and see if you could help me out. The last thing I expected was for you to ask me to borrow money, too. This is insane. But, darling, think about it. Darling, you never call me that. Well, it's a term of endearment, so I hope it's all right for me to call you that. Is it? Or would you rather me call you something else? No, but I just find it so convenient that you want to call me that and be nice to me when you want to borrow money from me. Well, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. I'm simply talking to you because I think that with the way you're being so generous to my family, you might have potential. Potential for what? To marry my son, of course. I mean, isn't that the whole point of lending my daughters the money? To have us vet you. To make us approve of you. Well, yes and no. I just thought that I was helping Anna out at first. That's all it was. She seemed like she really needed the money. I mean, in hindsight, I should have asked and pushed her a bit more to tell me what it was for. Then maybe I wouldn't have lent her the money. Then Debbie wouldn't have followed suit and neither would you. Well, I think the gesture was a wonderful one coming from you. Nothing could make me happier than having my children be financially taken care of. But this is crazy. They're both old enough to have their own jobs, right? And besides, I thought that at least Anna really needed it. It doesn't sound like she does now. And Debbie only seemed like she wanted to borrow money because I lent some to Anna. And now you? You're only asking me to lend you money because I lent your two daughters some money. Isn't that right, Mrs. Ringdale? Well, I don't suppose you could lend me some money now, would you? Oh my god, after all that I just said to you? Mrs. Ringdale, this isn't right. Sure it is. You want our approval, don't you? You want to marry my son, don't you? Yes, but by lending money to you? That's so wrong in so many ways. Well, if you'll get us to like you, then how is that wrong? I can't believe you're asking me that. Of course it's wrong. So, you're telling me that you are not going to do the same favor that you did for my two daughters for me? What? Mrs. Ringdale? Yes? Oh, you can call me Eleanor if you'd like. Now that I think we're starting to get along. Go on, you can call me by my first name. Right, Eleanor, then. 
I just don't feel like any of this is right. I honestly came here expecting to get your help and possibly having your daughters pay me back the money I lent them. Oh! <gasps> oh, is that what you were expecting, dear? Oh, don't be silly. I need the money too, darling. Of course I'm going to ask you for money if you've lent it to my daughters. So go on. Are you or are you not going to lend me the money, Arabella? Oh my god. And how much are you expecting me to give you? Well, seeing as I'm their mother and they got 5000 each, I would expect no less than $10,000. What? Mrs. Ringdale, Eleanor, that's the amount I already lent Anna and Debbie. I don't have that much more to lend you. Oh, sure you do. I know you do. In fact, we all know that you do, Arabella. You're in the medical field. Sure, but that doesn't mean that I'm made of money. No, sorry, but I can't. So, you can help our Charles' two sisters, yet you can't help his mother out. That's an interesting thought, don't you think? No, this is so unfair. I can't do this. And why not? I'm older and I'm going to retire soon. You'll be helping me out of the kindness of your heart. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, dear. No, there is. Everything about this is so wrong. I'm not your walking ATM, and I'm not someone you can just walk all over and take advantage of. So, is that a no? Eleanor, I can't. I have to earn a living, too. As do I, and don't we all. Then you'd understand that it's not easy to just give away money like that. I'm sorry, but I have to go. Go where? We're not done here yet. I just need to get some fresh air and step away from this conversation. Well, come back and tell me that you can help your future mother-in-law out when you're ready. I'll be here waiting. How about that? Oh my god. Sure, Eleanor. <coughs> Charles, I can't take this anymore. I know you're sleeping upstairs now because you're so drunk out of your mind. I can't do this anymore and I'm leaving. This isn't worth it anymore. I can't see a future with my in-laws being the way they are. They treat me like crap and I'm not their ATM machine. I need more respect from them than this. I can't build a future with someone whose family is going to take advantage of me like this. And I just don't think I can do this with you either. I love you, but I can't accept your family. They mean a lot to you and I can see that, but they need to treat me better. And I need someone who I can trust. Someone who can be on my side, even if it means me against them. I'm so sorry, Charles. I won't be here by the time you read this, but please understand that I have to do this for me and for us. Goodbye, Charles. Hey, whoa. <laughs> hey, Arabella. Baby, what's this all about? I just woke up, baby, and you're gone. Why aren't you picking up my calls? Babe, come on, talk to me. Just tell me what's on your mind. Okay, listen, I know that my family's a bit too much. Especially mom and the sisters. I know, and I get it, okay? But they really will give you all of the money back, and they mean well. I'm telling you. Yeah, right. They lied to me, Charles. Hey, babe, you replied. What do you mean, who lied? Debbie said she needed the money because she was born with a weak heart, but that's a lie, isn't it? Whoa, okay, that is the first time that I've heard of that. See? It's a lie, then. She lied to me. She lied straight through her teeth so that she could get money out of me. That's why she did it. Hey, come on now. I bet that's not true. Oh, yeah? Then prove it. Well, how? By telling me that your sister doesn't have a weak heart. Okay, well, she doesn't, okay? I have no idea what you're talking about. I happened to bump into your dad, okay? What, really? Yes, really, this morning. I drove over to your mom's place to talk it out with her and your sisters, too, in person. I was furious. I knew I just had to talk to them in person about this. But then, just as I parked the car, I saw your dad. So I talked to him instead, and he told me everything. What do you mean, like what? 
Oh, I found out more than enough, Charles. So much that you have no idea. Okay, like what? Can't you just come to my apartment and talk to me, babe? Oh, come on. These things are better talked in person, right? No, I don't want to see your face at the moment. Your dad is also one stubborn, selfish guy too, you know? Hey, that is my dad you're talking about. Don't talk about my family like that, right? You've said enough about the rest of my family. I won't let you talk about my dad too. Well, too bad, because you can't stop me from expressing my opinions. In fact, it turns out that the company that your dad works for and the hospital that I work at are very much connected. What? They are? Uh, that's a good thing, right? Sure, for me, and maybe not so much for you. But what do you mean by that? The company he works for is a medical device company. They supply medical devices to hospitals, including ours. We have a deal with them, and we're one of their biggest clients. Now, you know that my dad is on the board of directors at the hospital, right? All I need to do is tell him to discontinue the deal that our hospital has with you guys, and it'll be done. What? What do you mean you're going to lose a job for my dad? That can easily be done. You know my dad has authority, right? You know what he can do. Sure, but are you sure my dad's company works with your dad's hospital? You're 100% sure about that. Yep, I've done all my research and I can 100% prove that your dad basically works for my dad. And if I want to, I can turn things around and then things won't look so good for your dad anymore. Which of course means that it would affect your mom and sisters too. Babe, this isn't like you at all. Are you trying to tell me that you're going to get them back for borrowing money off of you or something? Oh, I'm not trying to. I am. I intend to, Charles. I want to at this point. The way they treated me at your lunch, how they just interrogated me with all their questions, how they belittle me and treat me like I'm nothing. No, 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 please. You can't do that. Babe, I told you that they're just trying to see if you passed the test, you know? And that's bogus too, Charles. Why should I be tested? And what is it worth, huh? I've been thinking a lot these days, and I've come to the conclusion that this isn't worth it anymore. What? You mean I'm not worth it? Exactly. You're not worth it anymore, Charles. I realize that no matter what kind of situation I'm in, as long as it involves your family, you're always going to be on their side. And my love for you isn't strong enough to deal with that. Whoa, are you trying to break up with me? I'm not trying to do that either, Charles. I am. I am breaking up with you. Well, wait, hold on. This is too soon. What the heck? Just let me talk to them, okay? I'll talk to everyone, even my dad. Oh, this is crazy. No, it's too late now. I'm not going back to you. And I've already told my dad about this whole situation anyway, and he's furious. And it's not just that either. But he looked at the numbers and track record with your dad's company, and the medical device that his hospital buys from you isn't benefiting his hospital anyway. What does that mean? That we have no problem cutting you off and signing a new deal with another supplier. No, don't do that. If you're one of his biggest clients, then surely he needs the contract, right? Come on, babe, please. You can't just do this to me. You've turned your back on me, and it's like you've just flipped from night to day. I don't get it. It's been a long time coming, if you ask me, Charles. I'm going to be honest here, and I thought I loved you, but I never did. What the hell? I just thought you were the only one I wanted to spend the rest of my life with because I couldn't be bothered to look for another guy. What? But I want to spend the rest of my life with you. That's why we got engaged. And that's why I introduced you to my family. Yeah, and that turned out to be a huge wake-up call. I can't deal with your family, and I don't want to. And that made me realize that I wasn't actually in love with you either. Babe, no, please, hang on. I'll get Mom and Anna and Debbie to talk to you, okay? They can explain things. This is all a big mistake, and you'll see, babe. I've already made up my mind, Charles, and you know me, right? Once I've set my mind to something, there's no going back. Yeah, but just give me a chance. 
Give my family a chance, okay? Let them explain. They'll die if they hear this. They really wanted you to be a part of our family. They had no idea how much you would affect my dad's job, okay? Please, babe. No chance. I really lost all respect for you and everyone in your family. If anything, I lost all the respect for you because of how your family is. Okay, okay, geez, just give them a chance, okay? Arabella, I don't think it's fair that you're doing this to my big brother. It doesn't matter if you hate us, but you don't have to go and dump my brother like that, you know? Do you know how heartbroken he is because of you? Because of me? Debbie, this is all because of you guys. You included. You lied to me. I did not. You said you wanted to borrow money from me because you needed it for your medication. Your weak heart or whatever. That was all just a pack of lies. You lied just to borrow money from me. How can you expect me to marry someone whose family are not only lying to me, but also stealing money from me like that? Whatever, Arabella. You're rich, so what is it to you anyway? All you've got to do is work a month or two and the money's back into your account again. It's like it never left, so I don't know what you're complaining about, you know? Excuse me. I work hard every single darn day to earn what I earn. I studied hard through medical school. You have no idea. No idea. So don't talk to me like you do, okay? Why don't you just go and get a job so you know how it feels to have your hard-earned money taken away from you? How about that, Debbie? Whatever, Arabella. Maybe you are better off without my brother. In fact, no, it's the other way round. My brother is the one who's better off without a tramp like you. Excuse me, says you. You're clearly the tramp. Look at the way you dress. I mean, from the first time I met you, I knew you were bad news. You better shut your mouth right now, Arabella, or else you're not gonna like what's coming next. What, Debbie? Is that a threat? Go on, then. Let's see what you got. You're gonna realize soon enough that you're the one that's gonna regret everything you've done to me. What's that supposed to mean? Why should I tell you? What's the point? You won't get it. You don't even know how businesses work. What the hell? And you think I'm threatened by that just because I'm not a freaking doctor like you? You're just a junior doctor anyway. You're not even a real doctor. Oh, I don't need to be, and I'm on my way there anyway. I have a better future guaranteed than you do, Debbie. Oh my god, I swear I'm gonna kill you the next time I see you. Well, then it's a good thing that you'll never see me again then, isn't it? In fact, the only person you're gonna be seeing is my lawyer. What the heck? You read that right. Now give me my money back or shove it. My mom and my sister are gonna burn you in hell, Arabella. Try me. How dare you talk to my little sister like that, you brat? You have no right to talk to her like that. Apologize to her right now, Arabella. Or what, Anna? Or what? Are you gonna steal more money from me? I know about your gambling addiction, and I know that I was just feeding you into it. What the heck? How the hell did you know about that? Who told you? Oh, I have money, remember? I can easily find things like this out using my resources. Did you hire someone to spy on me? Did you? That's a breach of my privacy, how dare you? Who said I did? Now you're just fabricating things. What makes you think I'll spill my secrets to someone who lies to me anyway? Do you think I'm that stupid? So now what then? You think you got me twisted around your little finger just because you know one little secret? Well, wouldn't it be great if your family found out about it? No! Don't you dare, Arabella! Don't you dare tell anyone about this! What have I got to lose, though, right? I mean, I've already broken up with Charles. What's it to me, right? It's just another family affair to me, and it's none of my business. No, please, you can't tell anyone about this. They'll die! My mom will be in shock, I'm telling you. My brother thinks I'm an angel, and Debbie thinks I'm flawless, and she looks up to me. You can't ruin that. Flawless. An angel. Wow. That just makes me want to show them the reality that much more. They deserve to know the truth, after all, don't you think? 
Okay, please, Arabella. What do you want? Do you want me to say sorry? Because I will. I'm really sorry, okay? I really needed that money because I was losing everything. I thought I could get a hit and win everything back. And did you? That was my money you used on your bets, right? Did you win? No, but I swear I can win it back next time I get on the machines. I promise you, and then I'll give you everything back double. I'll make it double, I swear. So just please don't tell anyone about this. Just keep it between you and me. I'm not making any promises until I get all of my money back from all of you. That's $5,000 from you, $5,000 from Debbie, and $10,000 from your mom. Until I get all of it back by the end of this month, you're going to have it coming. All of you. And don't forget, I can do a lot of damage with my connections. Okay, okay, all right, all right. I'll try and get the money back to you as soon as I can, okay? Good. I'm going to write a verbal contract so you'd better sign it. What? Really? Of course I am. Do you have a problem with that? No, no. Okay, I'll sign it. Now, could you kindly pass me on to your mother, please? I need to have a word with her, too. Okay, but whatever you tell her, don't mention about what we just talked about, okay? Sure, we'll see. Arabella, please. Just pass me on to your mother, Anna. Hi, Arabella. Anna says you wanted to say something important to me. This better be worth my time. Or what, Eleanor? What else is more important than listening to the conditions that I've got to give you? What are you talking about? Your husband's business has a deal with my dad's hospital. I'm sure you've heard about that from one of your daughters. Right, sure. What about it? I'm going to make a deal with you here. Unless you pay me back the $10,000 that you stole from me by the end of the month, then I'm going to make sure that your husband is out of a job by the same time. What? No, you can't do that. You don't have the power or the guts in you. Do you want to bet? No, that's ridiculous. How can you expect me to get 10 k by the end of the month? Are you crazy? Well, surely you haven't spent it all, have you? I mean, no, not really. But how am I going to get that kind of money? How much do you have left of it? Uh, I'd say around a thousand dollars. You've used a tenth of what I gave you in a matter of a few days? Is that Gucci bag worth it then? Oh my god, how did you know? You're asking the wrong questions, Eleanor. Oh my god, Arabella, I'm so sorry. Listen, I just spoke to Anna and Debbie and my husband. We need you to make him keep that job. They'll pay you every cent of what they borrowed right back to you. Me too. Listen, I'll figure something out, okay? Just give us more time, please. No, I want this bandage ripped off of me real fast. And the only way I can get that is if you pay me back right now. But I'm feeling generous, so I'm giving you until the end of the month. So it's either that, or I go straight to my lawyer and sue you for stealing my money. Okay, okay, I'll see what I can do, okay? I'm really sorry. Can we just talk, Arabella? My son is upset and he wants to make you happy. That's all he wants. And me and the rest of us just want him to be happy, okay? You understand that, right? Well, it's all a little too late for that now, isn't it, Eleanor? You shouldn't have tried to take advantage of me the way you did. You shouldn't have called me names or belittled me. This is called karma and it's come to bite your behind. So I'd either suck it up or cry me a river. I'm so sorry, Arabella. We're all really sorry. Please, we wish that none of this happened. I mean it. Please, can you just brush this under the rug? Why don't we start over, hey? We can have a nice meal at her home again. Next time, it'll be better than the last. We all swear on our lives to treat you better, Arabella. Arabella, are you there? My son wants to talk to you, and so do I. Arabella, please, just listen to what we have to say. Too late for anything now, you wicked witch. You guys all made your bed, and now you have to lie in it. So shove it and go to hell. No, please, Arabella, please.
So a month went by without any signs of my money ever coming back. Okay, that was a bit of a lie. I did get some money back. A total of $500. Only from Anna, who I assume won it on one of her gambling sprees. The other two haven't given me a cent of my money back. So, as I'd promised them, I sued them, and now they're obliged to pay back what they owe me and with interest. So, they'd better start looking for a job real soon, or else they're gonna get it worse than this. As for Eleanor's husband, well, just like I told them, my dad cut their contract with his medical device company, so that's one deal off the table for my dad. And a new one and a much better one on the way, so that all turned out for the better for my dad's business. As for them, I heard that Eleanor's husband was shortly fired, and I'm not sure it's related to what happened with my dad's contract, but oh no, well. It's none of my business anymore. They can figure it out themselves. As for Charles, I honestly got over him quickly. In fact, I'm over him already and ready to move on to a new relationship. It can be funny how that works out sometimes, isn't it? I totally thought I was in love with a guy until I wasn't. And then boom, another one bites the dust. I'm so glad that I never got married to him. My life would have been a nightmare if I did, so thank God for that. I think my dad was the one who helped me get myself out of this mess, really. His sane advice and his authority he has being on the board of directors at the hospital. I hope that one day I can find someone as smart, hardworking, and honest as him to marry one day. And I'm definitely not getting married to let alone date a guy like Charles ever again. That's for sure. So here's to me going back to being single and full of hopes to find a decent guy to marry my Prince Charming. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like it and see you in the next one.